Uri Slavkovsky is back on the ice at practice for Montreal, and he will make the upcoming road trip. We'll break that down, plus Kent Hughes made his first move of the regular season, and we're going to break down whether or not we think it might be another fleece for a defenseman. Finally, we're going to talk about Carey Price and his interview for The Athletic yesterday, and just how much of a hero he is, so you won't want to miss this episode of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, and welcome to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm Josh Goss alongside my co-host Jesse Poirier. And Jesse, as we've mentioned before, we're on that road to 1,000 subscribers, and 93% of you guys who are viewing aren't subscribed. It would mean a ton to us if you guys click that subscribe button, share with your friends and family, because we have daily Montreal Canadiens content. So if you want to stay up to date on your favorite team, we got your back. All right, well, let's get into the most exciting news of the day. Uri Slavkovsky is skating with the team again. You know, he's been out with this wrist injury for a little while now. He's missed the last few games, but we had a tweet today come out from Jean-Michel Bourque, who was at the Brossard facility, the Montreal Canadiens practice facility, and look at that. It's Uri on the ice, and boy, I'm so, so excited to have him back, Jesse. Yeah, no, me too. We were mentioning last night we've been missing him. You know, not having him on the ice is just... It's not the same. He's only been with us a couple games so far this year, and it already seems like we just can't play without him, you know? So definitely excited to be having him back and hopefully back in the lineup pretty soon. Yeah, I really hope so. Um, but I'll show this other tweet here from the official Canadian Twitter account. Uh, Slavkovsky n'a pas encore reçu le feu vert pour jouer, mais il fera le voyage avec l'équipe. He's not quite ready to play yet, but he will join the team on their road trip. And I think that's a great sign. So we should see him play on this road trip. And as we've mentioned in the past, we want to see him get some more minutes. We want to see him with some power play time. Of course, he's approaching that nine game mark. Which, you know, after which we would have to pay him a lot more money if we don't send him down to Laval. I think we should keep him up on the team for the full season. Why not? He's looked pretty good, pretty comfortable, even if he's not getting a ton of minutes. But I'd love to see him get some power play time, as a, even a big body in front of the net. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So my prediction is we're probably not going to see him for this first game in Buffalo, but probably for that second game of our of our road trip. He should be back. I think we're just erring on the side of caution, as we mentioned, and uh, he'll be back. Our boy's ready to go. He'll be good to go in no time. Yeah, I sure hope so. I mean, like we've said, I know it's a road trip, but I mean, anytime he's on the ice, you know, it sparks the Montreal faithful crowd in the Bell Center whenever he's on the ice. But even on a road trip, you know, he's going to spark his teammates. He's great friends with a lot of the young guys, especially you know, someone like Arbor Jack. I, and just having that that presence there just I feel like lifts the team, makes them want to play better. And I really hope we see that from him whenever he finally does make his return to the ice. All right. So let's get into our second topic today. Uh, another Kent Hughes fleece. That's a pretty bold claim to make, but we have, we have a little bit of evidence here. So Kent Hughes, of course, has made some amazing moves as the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens since he took over for Marc Rogevin just, uh, what, last year? Um, and I've been very pleased with pretty much everything he's done so far. And he has had a habit of drafting and developing our young players, plus also just claiming some people that other teams kind of throw in the trash. Someone like Kovacevic, who has looked amazing so far this season, uh, a great defenseman. But today, he made uh, a little trade. We traded Cam Hillis, who was a forward in the Montreal system, a former, I believe, third-round pick, but last season spent most of his time with Trois-Rivières in the ECHL. And we traded for Nicolas Baudin, a Quebec boy, Quebec-born, left-handed defenseman, coming home to Montreal and he spent some time in the AHL last year. And Jesse, I just want to know, what are your what were your first thoughts when you saw this trade? Of course, maybe after you had to look up these players, because, you know, not everyone knows who uh, Nicholas Baudet and Cameron Hillis are. Absolutely. On the surface, it definitely looks like an AHL depth move, which, I mean, is always welcome. You know, the Val Rocket, they're stacked this year, so any additions we can kind of get in the right direction is uh, definitely great. But uh, the early scouting report, off uh, Baudet, a former uh, first round pick is just, um, you know, really good hockey sense, but also being a great skater. And as we know, Josh, that just skating hockey sense, especially with a player like Martin St. Louis, these are two skills that go very well into his system. So potentially with a little bit of grooming, this might be a good fit in the future. Yeah, I mean, I believe he's 23 years old. We'll, we'll bring up his uh, his hockey, D hockey DB page here. As you guys can see, he's played a total of 22 NHL games dating back to 2019. 
Um, you know, he spent most of his time in the AHL last full season, 2021-22, 66 games with two goals and 14 assists. He is 23 years old, uh, just turned 23. So, you know, what we're looking at here, like Jesse like mentioned, it's probably an AHL depth move. But with the way Montreal has developed some of these, you know, unknown defensemen like you know, Corey Schooneman making Kovacevic look like a true, like, very solid NHL defenseman, you never really know. And it seems to be one of Kent Hughes, you know, main goals to attract good skaters and smart hockey players. I mean, just look at this past draft with some, some of the choices he made. The one I, that comes to mind always is someone like Lane Hudson. A very, very fast, quick, offensive-oriented defenseman. Now, I know that uh, Baudin is more of a puck mover, but I think it's a nice player to have and could potentially work his way up, maybe even this season in that, in my mind, maybe in even an 8th D role, with maybe uh, when the when the guys come back in Edmondson and Matheson, which should be soon. It seems like this might be a little bit of prep for that, who knows. But when they eventually come back, um, who knows, maybe Bodin could make his way up to that eighth spot, maybe play a couple games for Montreal this year if we need him to. Um, I'm holding out hope because, again, he hasn't quite put it together at a professional level yet, but I think being in this organization and the way we've been promoting growth since, since uh, Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon took over for our defensemen, I'm a little excited. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we got a young decor, so just whatever depth that we can get to add to that is just all the more welcome. For sure. All right, well, we'll move on to our final topic today. Carey Price. I mean, we talk about him a lot, especially because he did the media availability the other day for the first time in a while. But an article came out yesterday. Well, he had an interview with The Athletic, and he really opened up. And I haven't seen it reported on many of the main websites. I think I might have seen something on AS and, and New York Post. But Carey Price really opened up about his struggles and exactly what happened. He opened up that... He really struggled with alcoholism, especially after the playoff loss. He said he was losing, you know, weekend mornings with his children. And the NHLPA substance abuse program, or the player assistance program, I should say, really helped him get back on track. And Jesse, as we were talking about, like, for a player of his stature, of his, you know, just, you know, his celebrity status almost in the hockey world, and especially in the world of the Montreal Canadiens, for him to speak out about this, uh, and for his for his you know indigenous first nations people um it's such a huge step in the right direction absolutely price is just a complete hero you know we saw from the other day of just that spirit of not quite giving up you know and still holding out hope and and who's to blame him you know when you're doing something you love and there's still that remote possibility you know you want to hold on to it but you know just a couple quick takeaways from this is it really made me realize, you know, Montreal, we, we cover a market that's just crazy about hockey, but sometimes we forget that there are people too. And and as you mentioned, the, he gave a couple of the reasons for the, the alcoholism, which now came to light, is that it was, you know, first part of the pain, which we definitely get, you know, he's putting his body on the line for our entertainment, you know, for this playoff series. But then also just the disappointment of losing in the finals, him knowing that maybe this was his last uh, kick at the can and then coming up short, you got to feel for a person that's been training their whole life since they're so young. They then finally get this moment. They're right there. They're carrying the whole team. And for that all to kind of fall apart in a very anticlimactic sweep at the end, you know, that that really hit home. So this just reminded me personally that, you know, hockey players that they're people and we cover them and it's okay to hold them to account, but we need to remember that they're people at the end of the day. And even though they have money, they still deal with problems like everybody else. So, I mean, my hat's just completely off to Carey Price. He is just a complete hero. You know, alcoholism aside is that he didn't need to talk about this. He didn't need to bring it up. He could have just rode off into the sunset, you know, collecting his money for his retirement, but he decided I'm going to make a stand because what defines a hero is somebody that puts their community ahead of himself. And that's exactly what he's done. Carey Price is a First Nations individual, and not everybody even in the NHL knows that, but he's done a lot to really bring advocacy to that. And the reason that he came out and really talked about this is because he wants to encourage other First Nations people, and let's face it, just all people, because we're all people at the end of the day, if you have a problem with something, that it's okay to seek help for that. You know, so you can be a hero if you had a problem with alcohol. If you're able to then turn that into a positive and then to be able to help other people, you are still a hero as a result of that. So I just have so much respect uh, for Price for this move that he's made. 
excellently put, Jesse. I don't think I can even add anything to what you just said. Just very, very well put. I completely agree on everything you said. Price has been such a hallmark of, of Montreal hockey for his acts on and off the ice. He's a hero for our team. He's a hero for everything he's done in the Montreal Canadiens community. And he's a hero for speaking out about his problems and encouraging others to get help just like he did because it helped him. He's going to live a happier life because of it. And we can only hope that his words will reach, you know, thousands and upon thousands of people who hear them. All right, guys. Well, that'll do it for today's news episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're working our way towards 1,000 subscribers. We got your back for tomorrow's post-game recap. And we hope to see you there. Josh Giles for Jesse Poirier. See you later.